All right, guys, so this video lesson is going to run a little different than normal because it's not really a lesson. It's more of a review. So the way it's going to work is if you're in class live, you know that I went through some slides and just kind of asked you some questions and talked over a few key info pieces. And then I kind of gave you a lot of time to review on your own, review independently. I was just there to support and help you out and ask answer questions. So this is going to be a short video where I'm just going through those slides and we're talking a little bit about what's happening. So if you have questions or anything, message me on Teams, find me in office hours. But otherwise, we're going to be just doing review. So here we go. You don't want it to review. We already know that. So first things first, this is what we are going to talk about. Just think, I haven't said it in this class, and I'm sure you know it. I know you learned it already last year, probably the year before, but we're going to talk about it again, right? When you answer multiple choice questions in AP, you read the question first, then you go to the source and you read what you need. There's some times where you can answer the question very quickly after looking at the source, right? Oh, this is a question about, you know, what have you. It's a question about the Columbian Exchange, and I look at the source, and it's, you know, you can do it quicker. It makes it time, because remember, you got one minute per question. My next bit of info that I want you to know or remember is about looking at maps and other sources. Use the titles. Use the titles. Maps have titles for a reason. That reason is that they have a lot of really important information. You can look at, if they give you a resource like this and multiple choice questions, for example, and one of the multiple choice questions is, hey, what are the factors being shown in this map? You can look up and read the title and it says first cultures um, in 1600. Oh, well, it's about Native Americans. And if you look at your choice and you got, you know, you can dial it down a lot quicker and a lot easier. Use the words on the map. Sometimes they're more important than the map itself. Sometimes. Doesn't mean you don't look at the map, but it is something to keep in mind. All right. So first topic is pre-Columbian society. What are some things you remember? Well, they had two styles of living, right? Nomadic hunter-gatherers or sedentary uh, cultures that were advanced farming cultures. What did they farm? They farmed the three sisters, maize, corn, and squash. Europeans were not the people to discover maize. Actually, that should say maize, beans, and squash. I'll fix that. Maize, beans, and squash. And Europeans did not discover maize, which is corn. They did not discover it. Natives already had it. Natives spread it. Europeans didn't spread it or discover it. So, details about lifestyle. What does that mean? Well... Natives had different lifestyles, right? If they lived on the coast, what did they probably do? They probably spent a lot of time fishing. If they lived in the plains, what did they probably do? They probably spent a lot of time hunting. If they lived in places that were really good for farming, they probably farmed. If they lived in places that were bad, they probably didn't. Native American lifestyles depended on the areas they lived in. And pre-Columbus, pre-European contact, that is all you need to know. Now, when Europeans arrive, that's going to change. Here's a bigger look at that map, just to give you an idea. So, questions? Unfortunately, since this is a video, you can't ask me questions, so we're going to move on. Types of European colonization now. Spain, conquistadors were seeking riches and new territory. Right? They were out for gold. They wanted glory. They wanted to expand their empire. How do they treat the natives? Poorly. Horribly, 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 horribly. Natives hated the Spaniards. Hated them. France wanted areas mainly, wanted areas mainly for economic gain. France is looking to gain economically. They don't really care about land. They want beaver fur, trade routes. How do they treat the natives? Really well, because natives knew where all the beaver furs were. England had settlers going that wanted land and economic resources. They sent all sorts of people, literally boatloads, over and over to the new territory to try to get more new land. How do they treat the natives? Depends on the group, usually not well. And even if they didn't, they weren't inherently bad, the fact that there were so many made natives and English people not get along. So Spain treated the natives horribly, enslaved them, tried to capture them, all that good, all that bad stuff, I should say, not good stuff. And England treated them pretty badly because they kept trying to take land and move west. So keep that in mind. France treated them really well, though. Questions? You can't ask me any? Ah, the Colombian Exchange. So, with the Colombian Exchange, all we're going to do, we're going to talk about how things impacted Europe. So Europe, because of this, goes from a feudalist system to a capitalist system. We talked about this already, but I'm talking about it again. Feudalism 
that old system of kings and knights and, oh, you own this much land and you owe me this many soldiers is gone and replaced with a capitalist, more modern system. Plus, there's a demand, a demand, I should say, for the goods that are found in the Americas and more population growth and expanding imperialism. There's like, this comes from there. Well, let's go over there. Let's send more people. We need more people. Well, we got more people. In the Americas, natives receive new advantages such as the horse and the gun. Natives witnessed Europeans changing their landscape. They were unhappy with this, building walls, building little farms, changing the natural landscapes. They did not appreciate that. And then the American landscape changed permanently, like we said. Native tribes were devastated by disease. Devastated. Here's an example of the Columbian Exchange. Again, we've already talked about this. Just moving on. Questions, again, can't ask me any. Three things. Lasting Spanish Empire effects. First, you got the encomiendas, encomienda system. Right? A system of labor. Spaniards forced the natives to work. But natives often died of disease, and therefore we had to, sw or they had to switch to the asiento, asiento system, system of labor where African slaves were brought in by Spain. Spain were the first people to bring in African slaves, right? And they were brought in due to the native population decline. Next is the plantation system. This isn't only unique to Spain. Europeans, uh, British will do this as well. Um, a system of large-scale farming, primarily of cash crops. Uh, plantations will ha rely heavily on slave labor. When you think of plantations, think of slave labor. So, let's talk about Jamestown. Founded in 1607, Jamestown, Virginia, 1607. It was founded by wealthy gentlemen. They were not prepared for colonization. They were there looking for gold. Suffering through the starving times and trouble with natives. They did not have an easy go of it early on. Versus Plymouth, founded in 1620. This is Plymouth, Massachusetts. Instead of gentlemen looking for gold, it's family seeking religious freedom. Families are prepared for colonization. They have a much easier time living life. They're ready for it. They're trying to do it. They have support with one another. And on top of that, they were nice to the natives, and the natives were nice to them. So a big change of pace there. Briefly, we're going to talk about the Puritans. Extreme Christians wanted a new place based on pure Christianity. Extreme beliefs, strict culture, they established Massachusetts Bay Colony, pioneers in education and other fields. You can feel the Puritan influence throughout all of culture. They'll lead to the Second Great Awakening as well, which we will get into, or the First Great Awakening, well, which we'll get into later. That comes more relevant when we get into the Revolution. The three big regions. So, let's just put them all out here. The New England Colonies. Small-scale family farms for food, mostly. They didn't make their money that way. They made their money in a mixed economy based on trade. They love trading rum, shipbuilding, all that good stuff. Middle colonies relied on grain-based agriculture, massive lumber fields for trade, mainly grain, bread basket. Think bread basket when you think middle. Southern economies, cash crop agriculture, tobacco saved Virginia, but slavery and plantation systems were critical to this region, the southern region. Now let's talk about the geography of the territories. Why were these so different? Now, in New England, a big part of why you don't get, you know, large-scale farms is because they can't make large-scale farms. Rocky, bad soil, horrible climate, long, cold winters, bad for economic growth. You needed to do other things as far as for agriculture. Up oh, the middle colonies, great growing seasons, but they were very normal. The middle colonies are very middle. They're very meh in the middle. Great growing season, great uh, soil, but not perfect, just good. Now the southern, long summers, extra long summers, great, really fertile soil, amazing soil, long planting seasons, and open fields for cash crop growth and plantations to be built. So, hold up, I messed this up. There we go. So I'm going to point out the yellow, southern. These are the four middles. And then these are the New Englands. And that is it. This exit ticket will be in Google Classroom. If you missed the class, make sure you go into there, fill in the blanks, get it done. Other than that, guys, have a great rest of your day. Hopefully you do well on your exam on Friday.